Joe's Too Critical of the Simpsons. What's the scoop, milkshakes? This is Joe's Too Critical of the Simpsons. It's a podcast where I summarize the most recent episode of Modern Simpsons by doing a cool, cool, big time, awesome radio play using silly voices that are impressions of the characters. Some are the best impressions you've ever heard. Some are not really good, but they have their charm. The voices are taken from this series I did and sometimes maybe will do again <laughs> in the future. The Simpsums, S-I-M-P-S-U-M-S, uh, where I drew horrible uh, caricatures, sort of, of the character. It was, that, that, that. it was the same thing as this. I summarized it, except I did it with animation and I didn't talk so fucking much at the end. If you want to go watch those, if you're, if you're on SoundCloud right now and you want to go watch those, Simpsums, you can go to my YouTube page, links all over the place. Probably, I think. <laughs> if you're watching this on YouTube or listening to it and you want to go download it as an MP3 to put inside your head, uh, go to SoundCloud. There's a link in the description for that. Uh, after I do the summary, I do criticism where I talk for fucking ages like a freak on a leash. <laughs> Remember them? And then I tell you the news, all the news that's fit to shite out. Um, this is the f f f f f f finale, for fuck's sake. Finally, finale of season 27. Thank Christ. What a not fun ride it's been. Might not even call it a ride. What a sad time it's been. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, let's do it. Season uh, 27, episode 22. Here's the summary of that. It is called Orange is the New Yellow. And it aired on March 22nd, 2016. Here's the summary! I am late getting home. I'm, I'm Homer. <laughs> I am Lisa. Mom, I have immediate concerns. I am the baby Maggie. I am making a mess. Obviously, I don't actually talk here, but, you know, for summary purposes. I am Bart. I will attempt to help you clean up the mess, mother, but I end up making everything worse. Oh, just go play outside! Uh, so Bart goes to the park. Hello, Bart! I'm Martin! Hello, Bart. I am Martin's mom. Have I ever even been on the show before? Huh? Uh, where's your mother? Not here, IMO. Oh, I call the cops. So Wiggum shows up. Eh, kids aren't allowed on their own these days. Who said you could do it? My mother. So they go to the Simpsons' house. We are arresting you, Marge, for your negligence. Oh! <laughs> uh, so then in court. Marge, you go to prison for 90 days. Okay. In the women's prison. I am in a bunk with scary women who bully me a little bit. Back at the Simpsons' house. Well, sir, Homer, me and the other neighbors have brought you a bunch of food and gift baskets and such in your time of need. Cool. Millhouse's parents are in this scene, by the way, and they, they have him on a leash, which is a little bit of foreshadowing for a, a small thing that happens later. Like a freak on a leash. <laughs> In the prison library. We are scary prison women. We bully you. Oh, I attack with my hair. Knocked out you prison women good. Back at the Simpsons house. Well, sir, I'm still helping you guys out. Great. We're still eating from gift baskets. Oh, I am planting flowers in the prison garden. How nice. I am a guard and it's exercise time. Oh, I never usually have time to exercise. It's great in prison. Uh, meanwhile, acts of prison violence take place behind Marge. She doesn't see them. Oh, we're almost out of gift basket goods. Uh, later, the family calls Marge in the prison. We all have demands of you, even when you are in prison. Yes, demands. Yes, demands. I am bonding with my prison ladies now. Eight o'clock, lights out. Oh, it's great. I like to sleep early. Meanwhile, uh, acts of prison violence take place behind Marge. I've come to visit you at the prison. I brought the lawyer. I found a way to get you out of prison. This is good because we have lots of problems at home for you to fix. Oh, uh... Marge grabs a prison guard's gun and fires it into the air. Now you must keep me in prison longer! Oh, Marge wants to stay in jail instead of coming home, so I have to become better. Now I am watching all the neighborhood kids because all the parents agreed to this. I am taking them on a walk. I have them all on leashes. I'm Ralph. I escape. Now I must go after him. Hey, having grown-ups around all the time sucks. Let's sneak off to the park unsupervised. 
By the way, there are some dark clouds in the sky here, I guess, which I, is, yep, they're in there. You, you barely notice them, but they're there. Oh, now I realize things around the prison remind me of my family, who I miss. I guess I needed a break, but maybe not a prison break. The other inmates hear her say prison break, and they go, prison break, prison break, and they begin to riot. Oh, no! Us kids are now having unsupervised park play. Also, there are lots of dark uh, clouds out. Tornado! So yeah, now there's a tornado. <laughs> uh, so there's a riot in the prison courtyard now. Oh, I don't care for it! Marge, I'm here. I dressed up in a prison guard outfit to sneak you out. It sucks at home, maybe, but it sucks here worse. It's a fucking prison. Yeah, you're right! Now I am back home. I am a little more crazy and aggressive because of prison, but it's fine. We are clingy of you now because we are scared of you leaving again. Yes, we are. Ah, oh, we are glad to have you back. Whatever. Everyone hugs. It's actually kind of nice. Grandpa's in there, too, and the dog. Lots of hugging. Not the cat, I guess, though. Poor cat. No hugs for the cat. Now for criticism! Okay, so... This is a pretty average modern episode, uh, in many ways. Uh, I tend to start with my criticism by saying the jokes I liked, and there's a... Eh, there's, some, there's some good jokes in this one. The reason Homer's late getting home at the beginning of the episode is because Mr. Burns grabs him on his way out and makes him hold a poster over a giant hole in the wall that he's making him and Smithers, uh hang this poster together and they are leveling it with a plumb bob which is some i've never seen these in my life it's like a hanging metal thing and there's a dude with a crank and he's very slowly cranking it to find yeah to level the poster but i i actually occasionally they still get me with this mr burns stuff where he's like using old technology and stuff i, I occasionally they they bust out some funny old mr burns thing and i and i like it um there was one where he's in a later episode where he's trying to guess the outcome of some kind of sports event and he's using some sort of crazy predictor, uh, mechanical predictor, printing all this stuff and, and <laughs> Smithers is like, it's jammed, sir. And he goes, yes, well, apply more goose grease. And I, I <laughs> maybe they're easy to, you just like find some old thing to say and, and make him say it, but I don't know. I like it. I like the plum bob fine. I think it's a, a good comedy idea. Why is Homer late getting home? It's because he has to wait for the plum bob and he tells the man operating the plum bob that he wants him to sing a plum bob song. Mr. Burns tells this guy. And I thought the plum bob song was kind of funny too because the guy, it's a bad song. The, he's like, sing a plum bob song and the guy goes, oh, uh, 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 and then he sings this really bad Song about how you mustn't rush the plum bob. Yeah, I thought it was a, a pretty okay sequence. When they come, when they come, take Marge away. When the cops come, Marge says, "Who's gonna watch my kids?" And Wiggum says, "Yeah, you should have thought of that before we showed up unannounced." It's all right. After Marge leaves, Homer's of course supposed to be cooking before they get all the gift baskets. One of the kids says, "I think you're supposed to cook sausage," and Homer says, "What's the point?" Which I like. Uh, uh, the <laughs> like he's just saying, "Oh, it's hopeless," but it's like, well, you also have to make sure your kids don't die or get sick. But the, what's the point? They they had two like nice little sequences of jokes where I kind of liked everything in it. When Flanders is helping him out, he says, "I replaced the batteries in the smoke detectors, which were all bad. One was just a candy dish with a red light painted on." And Homer says, "Was there any candy in it? There is now." <laughs> so yeah, you know, Flanders went around replacing the batteries. One was a candy dish. Smoke detector, he put candy in it, because he's Flanders. And then Homer says, oh, Flanders, it turns out there's a good side to you after all. Yeah, it's also okay with me. And there's sort of a quick one-off joke that Homer's actually apparently brought his laundry to the prison to have it done. He just says to Marge on the phone, are my pants done at the prison laundry? Fine. Yeah, and this joke, I really actually, this is a charming little joke. When Homer says he's going to get Marge out, he got her out on a technicality. Technicality, by the way, is that Mar Bart is technically not their child uh, because, because Homer didn't, like, fill out the birth certificate ever or didn't submit it or something. Yeah, it's, uh, I didn't bother mentioning it because it's, like, a joke reason, but I'm actually okay with that. I like this idea that there's actually this really awful thing that's just kind of, there because that, that's sort of the thing you might think I point out and go, like, I can't believe they did it, but, you know. I get jokes. I get jokes. I think that one's all right. But that's not the joke I was even going to say. Um, when Homer says he's going to get her out, he goes, It's not the world you remember. The girl at the coffee place that left came back. So you'll have that to get used to. It's, it's, it's cute. In terms of bad jokes, something I don't even get why it's in the episode, because later Flanders is 
up and about and fine. When the cops come to pick Marge up, they run Flanders over. He just gets, like, knocked aside. by He goes flying up and over the car and lands on the ground. Like, what the fuck? I don't get it. Like, why'd they even put it in? It's fucking weird. It's not funny. It's, like, such a quick moment of, like, he, they whack him real good. And then he's fine later. So, what? Why is it in the episode? I guess, like, just to emphasize more the incompetence of the cops, they've come to arrest a woman for letting her kid play outside, and they've knocked... They've, they've run a man over. Ah, whatever. One joke that makes no sense, really. The initial idea is sort of funny, I guess, but, like, the whole premise doesn't really make sense. When the family's calling Marge and bugging her for stuff, even when she's in prison, Homer's in the middle of talking. I think he's saying, the, are, are my pants done at the prison laundry? And the line goes dead, and you hear the dial tone, and Homer goes, <gasps> the electric chair, which is kind of okay. I don't know why he would think that was the electric chair, but... It's kind of fine. It's sort of a funny idea. But then it cuts to Marge bonding with her inmates by saying, and then he thought it was the electric chair. And they all laugh. So wait, what? It, what? How? Oh, uh, okay. I like, because I was thinking, but she's not on the phone anymore. That was the dial tone we heard. So why would she know that he thought it was the electric chair? But I guess I've just now thought of this. One assumes if Homer thought it was the electric chair, he got in touch with someone at the prison and said, did you just <laughs> electrocute my wife? And they said, oh, no, that was the dial tone. And then Marge said, and then they told Marge, I guess. And then Marge went and told her, fr you see what I'm saying? The premise is too weird for this joke to hold up because it's like, uh, she wasn't on the phone anymore. It was a dial tone. It isn't her going, making a beep noise. It's the dial tone. How does she know he thought it was the electric chair? It's not a good joke. It's weird. It's, 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 it's Stretch the premise too thin. And this joke right after is very odd, too. When they tell, when they say lights out, this is Marge's line. Really? Eight o'clock? I get to go to bed? I don't have to clean a sink full of dishes or write a paragraph with topic sentence for Homer? Okay. Like, I don't... This was a, some, this was a line I listened to over and over again because I was like, what? what? Why would she have to write a... It's, like, sort of implying, like, Homer... Well, Homer forces her to write a paragraph about what? I don't, for, huh? For what? Why? I don't get it. Like, it's, it's, mm-mm. Because it's like, it's not, it's not something that fits Homer's character, you know? Is the idea that Homer makes her write a paragraph? Because Homer's not a literary man. Why would he do that, you know? Or does he need a topic sentence, a paragraph, a topic sentence written for him? But for what? At the power plant? They want him to write paragraphs? What is it? I don't get it. It's uh, it's the idea that what she cleans the the the, the dishes and writes a paragraph about. It? I don't know. It says or write a paragraph. And delivery is like that, by the way. Or write a paragraph with topic sentence for Homer. I don't, the pauses about too kept making me go like, Wait, what is it? Is there a different joke I'm not getting? I find it a very odd premise. Also, there's also the thing where Homer says, "I need to become like a better." What he actually says is, "I need to become like the best homemaker." And then he has this daydream where he's the woman and Marge is the man in like a business suit and it's sort of like a black and white sitcom scenario. And the first time it happens, it's okay. It's kind of funny. He reveals at the end that Homer is a drunk. He's at home. He's a housewife, but he gets drunk on gin. It's sort of fine. It works fine. Um, but then it's the way the episode ends. The episode ends with a tag where they revisit this fake sitcom. And again, I think all the jokes I didn't like in this episode were very, it was the premise was too convoluted to really work. So the way it starts, they just, it just flashes on the screen, season six, which in, in itself, you kind of have to wrap your head around and go like, sorry, what? Season six of what? And then you realize you're watching, you're supposed to be watching season six, a scene from season six of Homer's imaginary, he's a woman homemaker in a, in a fake sitcom. And this is season six. Uh, uh, so it's like the premise is weird. And then it also ends with him giving all the, he get in, in, it's like, it's like in season six, everything's gone more extreme. So now he's not just drinking gin. He's giving the kids gin in a bag for lunch. And then, but the thing that like the last thing he does is he stop, he just shoves the bottle of gin into Maggie's mouth. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's one thing like giving the kids gin. That you don't see them drink. There's such a fine line between like grotesque and just like fucked up and satirical. And I don't know. When you're forcing babies to drink, it's not that good. Happened also in Maggie's Animal Adventure. Maggie made a, a, a another baby drink. 
alcohol by shoving a tube in his mouth. I don't think it's a don't think it's a funny image that well th- not one that fits this show anyway in my opinion. And it also ends with Marge and Flanders. Flanders comes in, Homer passes out drunk on the couch and man version of Marge uh seems to be having an affair with Flanders. It's unclear if that means they're gay cuz I don't know if she's actually supposed to be a woman or just a woman in a man suit or Either way, she's having an affair, and that's how it ends, and I don't know. Like, it's just, it's just at the end, they piled on all this stuff. Ah, Marge has an affair, he's drinking gin, it's just like, I don't, okay, too much stuff, not fleshed out, not funny, because it's too weird. I don't know. You just throw a bunch of shit at me at the end. Also, the thing that reminds Marge of Homer in prison, she sees multiple things in the prison that remind her of her kids, and then she sees, for Homer, uh, somebody's using Mr. Sparkle laundry detergent. Eh. That's one of those things where... You know, it's kind of li- it's it sort of counts on you knowing the Mr. Sparkle episode. Otherwise, it's just weird. Oh, there's a picture of Homer on that box. So, hmm, hmm, not sure how I feel about it. I'm not I'm not a fan of of, of the callback shit where it just it just feels like them going. We remember the, 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 the see, we're fans of our show too. Uh, and furthermore, you know, it's one of these things where it's it it kind of doesn't. I always try to think, like, Simpsons is one of the shows I've said, I think I said last time, it's a show from an an older era where you are able to watch these things as complete works by themselves. Of course, almost everybody knows The Simpsons to an extent. I'm not so unmoving on this that, you know, every episode has to be a self-contained thing with no prior knowledge needed. But it is one of those things where I think, well, unless you know Mr. Sparkle, it's a kind of random that that Homer head is on a box of detergent and I, I i think ideally your your plot movement should uh they could reference something old as long as they also work for people who aren't familiar with them but what well, you know i'm being a stickler uh not a big surprise uh <laughs> something too i don't quite like what i what i've said too about references before that bothers me a little bit is how the show is so selective with what it does and does not remember and i mean we're remembering mr sparkle exists right here but at the same time, the show makes no reference to the fact that Marge was already in prison before. In the season four, in a really good episode, Marge was in prison. So, like, it's not even touched on uh, that, that this is her second time. You'd think there'd be stuff about her, you know, being used to this or something. Maybe we are supposed to think that, but, you, you know, they're, because she, she pretty quickly rises up against her bullying prisoners. But, but one would assume there'd be direct dialogue pointing to the fact that she used to be she she was in prison before i was also trying to think like is this a prison she should be in i don't know maybe for like child negligence maybe you go to a really bad prison she because she apparently just goes to like the normal women's prison you know where people are beating each other up and trying to kill each other so i, I don't know <laughs> i i guess whatever uh gloss over that but to to an extent i was sitting there going like would marge be put in the really like fucked up pound you in the ass prison I don't know. That's uh, what's that a reference to Office Space? I think so. Okay. So I don't know. Uh, this is sort of an okay episode, sort of. It's. <laughs> I might say. I I guess I'll say this is probably like at the bottom of the best quote unquote best episodes of this season. It kind of works. I mean, the th- the thing is. It really is just an A plot, and in general, this season when they've almost exclusively just gone with one plot, because all it is is Marge is in prison, and the family, like Marge, Marge having a, a pretty okay time having a break from the family in prison, and the family having to deal without Marge, and that's kind of it. So you know everything's sort of a, a directly correlated to Marge going to prison, um, basically just an A plot, more or less. And so usually when they do that. They have more time to for these plots to breathe. They have more time for these, for stuff to sink in. And I mean, overall, the idea that Marge is enjoying her break in the prison sinks in. We see her do enough things that that doesn't feel like bullshit. But other stuff isn't handled quite as well. I mean, it's kind of weird that the the last time Marge went to prison, it was very much about how the house went to shit without her. And then I think the town even kind of went to shit without her was the idea of that. And everybody missed Marge. But this, it's more like... The, it, Homer, they just get by because the town gave them shitloads of gift baskets. So there's the impending doom of things going bad once they run out of gift baskets, but it doesn't actually happen. They just are out of gift baskets, and then Marge comes out of jail. So 
there's not really, you know, we get the feeling that the family needs her. They call her up in the prison. They still need her, whatever, whatever. But I don't know. The situation doesn't seem as dire as it should. I believe Marge needs her break in prison. That the family is doing terribly is not really, that's not really driven home. Some some things that happen that are kind of random, Marge rising up against the inmates is kind of random. There's nothing implying she she should have this reserve of confidence to knock them down with her hair and establish some dominance. There's no reason. They bully her a little bit for one scene. Not even that much. They just kind of hint at being aggressive and lesbian. And that's about it. And then the next scene, they, they, they knock a book out of her hands in the library and that's enough to push her over the edge that she knocks somebody down with her hair okay uh two people i don't know like that like that that doesn't come that doesn't really get built from anywhere marge is just angry okay i guess i guess i also think the prison so there's these repeated themes of prison violence happening while marge isn't looking that's useful for the plot in that it you know we get a riot later and and that works fine i think marge the the when she says prison break and they go prison break and a prison break starts again i think that's a fine way that's like a jokey simpsons um plot maneuver where it, you know that's all you need you just you can you can start that part with a joke i think because they built up earlier that this is a prison where violent things happen so it's it's not that's actually not crazy uh if you plant the seeds of stuff you know it works i believe you so there is prison violence going on there are people getting knocked over the head behind marge's back there's a part where one prisoner starts a fight with a guard and the guard chokes her i guess the idea is supposed to be prisons awful and marge is kind of just blissfully unaware of how awful it is until the end when the riot happens but i do also i don't know you know it's hard for me to say what is and is not kind of awful because i i'm aware that the old show used to be quite dark but something about this the, uh, I'm not sure if it would have shown it in this way. I mean, it's 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 kind of the way I'm ta I was talking about that end gag, like giving the kids gin and then them walking off with the gin in a bag. Okay, fine, but like shoving the bottle into the baby's mouth, the bottle of gin in the baby's mouth. That's, you know, like you can do the satire, you can do the fucked up stuff without actually making it look fucked up and feeling like a different show. And to me, especially with this lady getting choked, by a uh, a guard, she comes into the cell after, and then sh and the guard just throws her into the cell uh, onto the bed, and she's like, uh, like gasping and and kind of unconscious, and and Marge's like, oh, everyone goes to get sleepy like early around here, and you know, like it's kind of nasty. She she just kind of got choked out, <laughs> you know, um, like a version of this that I was okay with uh, is the second time they're they're in the garden twice, and Marge is called off to go. Uh, Homer's come to try to get her out of jail and uh, one of her inmates before she walks off says like oh your positivity is infectious and then when Marge walks off they go okay let's move the body in now and they have a dead body that they're burying like that's kind of okay with me this sort of like it's both comedic and fucked up I mean I don't think it would happen how do you have a dead body just out in the garden at a prison without a guard no but whatever <laughs> um you know, like that kind of, that kind of, maybe it's just the difference between it being, you know, you can do something fucked up while it's sort of lighthearted. I don't know. The woman getting choked until she like passes out into a uh, pained slumber is, is, is not funny to me. But anyway, so as I said, the A plot, it's mostly an A plot. It has more of a chance to breathe. I was going to say also, I was thinking like at this point, do I only uh, allow for shows for episodes with A plots? Are those the only good ones? And it's like, I don't. I don't really think so. It's just it's just they need to somehow put real moments in the episodes instead of just speeding them along. And when they don't put so many plots in, they sort of inadvertently do that a bunch of times because, you know, they're not being distracted by a million other plots. And I would say I, I was thinking about this and I was thinking we uh, maybe give them some leeway because back in the day, the good episodes were longer. I believe that's true. I mean, I'm fairly positive that's true. I think uh, as time has gone on advertising, they've just let it cut more and more into the actual times, uh, running times of shows. Uh, and I believe that's true because, you know, if you watch a Simpsons DVD, I watch so many of these on reruns after a while. And then if you watch a DVD, suddenly you, I would, you know, you see a scene that you're like, oh, I don't even remember that scene. And it's because it got cut uh, out of syndication so they could cram more ads in. And the other thing, I mean, 
so so I mean I'm like I'm trying to think like maybe it's just harder to make like an emotional episode uh, with fewer uh, minutes now and while that's probably true and advertising sucks I also think well community was a show that was on TV only, what, six, seven years ago? And Community was often a very emotional show. Fucking Steven Universe is half the size of these shows. Only like ten minutes, and Steven Universe is often a very emotional show. Uh, Adventure Time is sometimes, too. So, you know, it's not really an excuse. I don't know what they're doing wrong. Um, They're just too distracted by fucking around. Throwing weird, silly shit at you, I guess. I don't know. But anyway... A plot only. Lands a little better. They did manage to foreshadow stuff a little better. It's not a hugely important plot point, but the part I mentioned, Millhouse is on a leash, which then later, when Homer's walking all the kids on a leash, it doesn't seem so crazy because you've already seen Millhouse on a leash. It's not just a weird non sequitur. Oh, suddenly these children are all on a leash. So fine. Like, you know, these are small moments of foreshadowing that actually do matter. So fine. The general plot about kids supervision i will say first of all on the one hand it it was one of the very few times it started to feel like old simpsons satire where they were very clearly commenting on a current trend in society the way we are kind of forced to shadow our kids at all times because there's actually laws now i think i think there genuinely are laws where about this stuff in at least some states where you can't uh, leave your kids unsupervised really so It started to feel like satire, and it started to feel, probably because most of the people on this show now are parents, there was a hint of bitterness behind it, this notion of, like, why the fuck can't your kids just be allowed to play outside? And the the way the town overreacts, the way Wiggum overreacts immediately, I would call it very South Parkian, just because South Park is the show that usually does this stuff now, but, you know, back in the day, The Simpsons, I've said back in the day many times already in this episode, very sad for me uh (laughs) you know way back when the simpsons was that was that show too i mean it's uh uh you know like the one with the bear the bear comes around the town and suddenly bears are all anybody cares about i mean i don't think bears uh, was satirizing a a bear problem but it was satirizing the idea of um a community overreacting to a specific uh event uh an anomaly uh and making it into a big thing which is you know kind of what people do in our society and there there was a little bit of a message right before the tornado comes and i guess the tornado fucking proves everything wrong <laughs> everybody does need to supervise their kids because otherwise a fucking tornado will come so i don't know but right before that lisa says something like it just goes to show danger is not the rule but the exception which i know many people will see as lisa proselytizing as usual but you know it, it was fine it was a capper it was a little moral uh that they had built up to But not that well. I mean, the thing is, not that well. Uh, For something about satire, it only felt like satire a little bit, and in the end it became more like what The Simpsons does now when it tackles social issues, in that it does not really tackle them. It uses them as a springboard, as in the girl code and female programmers and blah, blah, blah. Uh, It uses them as a springboard just to make an episode about whatever. So this is just an episode about Marge being in prison because the family's pissing her off, you know. Um, The super, So the kid versus supervision, it feels like a little bit of satire, but it doesn't... It doesn't take it to much of a conclusion. As I said, fucking a tornado comes, so I don't know what I'm supposed to believe, you know? (laughs) When the kids do go out on their own, a tornado comes for them. But I will say there, too, bringing back the kids' supervision plot, like, to make something happen in the end, also kind of fine. You know, the episode starts with this issue and then later kind of culminates with this issue again when Homer's walking them on a leash. Um, just the fact that they remembered to bring a plot back, it's like, cool, hey, good job. That's a good boy. Good for you. You managed to remember something you'd uh, written about earlier in the episode, because often they don't. They often forget what the fuck they're doing and they just jump from plot to plot to plot. But still, that could have been done better too, because... <sighs> I, I, I don't know if I'm contradicting here. I don't think so, because I'm saying, oh, th- they do better when they just have an A-plot, but I also want them to do this. Uh, I don't think so, though. I mean, they kept having to show how things were going for the family back at home. They could have tried to somehow tie that in with, you know, Homer is forced to spend all his time with the kids because you're not allowed to leave them unsupervised. You know, if they want it, they could have made the kids' supervision thing a running theme because as it is, although it technically basically works because, you know, it was introduced to us early in the episode at the beginning, it still is a little bit out of nowhere that suddenly Homer's out walking all the kids in the neighborhood and he has to just be like, oh, we all agreed to walk all the kids, uh, to watch kids, blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, I forgot about that plot, you know? 
Um, they because they didn't touch on it the whole time in the middle. It just was they were sitting around eating muffins out of gift baskets. Oh, okay, <laughs> I think basically the stuff that was going on with Homer and the kids should have had something more to it. It should have been more demonstrative of the fact that they needed Marge back and more and and probably demonstrated more the whole kids supervising thing. I think they could have tied that in without really like increasing the the time devoted to that stuff too heavily i think i already said but again just foreshadowing uh wise the way they sort of manage these things they planted these things okay the prison break is fine because of even though i didn't like some of it because of the fact that there was violence earlier in the episode demonstrated then we believe a prison break can just break out uh so you know they did they do some of this stuff pretty pretty okay but the stuff i've mentioned already is a little bit could have been handled better and furthermore, then the whole ending is just rushed. The ending is rushed like crazy. Uh, I mean, Homer says he has to become a better, you know, homemaker or whatever. And we do see him walking the kids, but that almost seems like a, a tangential issue. It's not It's not about him being good with his kids. That's just suddenly, oh, uh, uh, we brought back the kids' supervision pl plot. And, you know, I guess it's Homer being a good guy, but it's not really, you know, it doesn't really show how he's, I don't know. It doesn't seem like something that would help Marge out. So, I, whatever. It seems like two separate things. I don't know if that's even supposed to be a depiction of Homer trying to be a better homemaker or whatever. Fine. But it's the only one he gets. And he, first of all, he fucks that up. Ralph gets away. And then all the other kids get away. So, first of all, he fucks that up. And then it just... It's just dismissed. Uh, He just then, like, literally the next scene shows up dressed in a prison guard uniform to get Marge out of jail and break her out of jail, which... So they just break out, by the way, um, even though she stole a guard's gun and shot it in the air. They do show, there's a, a joke, it's not entirely dismissed. Somebody tries to, a, a tower guard tries to kill her. Um, there's a sniper, and he tries to snipe her, but her hair, she uses too much product, and it ricochets off her hair, and it hits him in the arm. So, but, I mean, that is kind of fucking ridiculous. Marge is just let out of jail. Uh, <laughs> she escapes. She literally does a prison break. Okay, no problem. <laughs> not like not like Wiggum knows who she is and could pick her up anytime. But yeah, I mean Homer doesn't really he learns he has to be a better guy, which is good. Uh it's technically good that Homer is the one who comes to rescue her, like just showing him making some effort instead of just being a dick. But he also just dresses up like a prison guard, which is very random. You know, very fucking random. Where did he get that outfit? Why is he not looking for the kids? He just lost the kids. He is the one who lost the kids. A tornado came, and then he's in the prison yard. Ah, oh, fuck the kids. They're they're gone. Like, <laughs> you know? It's like Homer forgot he was a part of that plot. Also, before that, Marge doesn't really get a chance to show that she misses the family up until the very, like, the scene before the, the prison break. Marge doesn't miss her family. She's having a great time. She's glad she has a break. But then suddenly there's just a scene where, oh, I miss my family. And it's, you know, again, we're kind of in bullet point plot area they they were they were getting there and then at the end oh we, well she just decided she missed her family they should have tried something more meaningful it's literally it's literally just she sees mr sparkle she sees some sort of i forget she sees something that looks like the outline of lisa's head she sees a prison inmate drinking some sort of horrible juice thing alcohol concoction and she uh, uh imagines maggie sucking on a bottle whatever so it's just suddenly I miss my family, you know, that should have been built to more. That's just rushed. It's mostly the ending where all this stuff was rushed. And then, of course, the fact that there's a fucking tornado. Where the hell did that come from? I, 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 I actually this is another episode I watched twice because I thought I didn't get it down. I couldn't really see what, what I, I thought I missed it the first time. And I was, I'm sitting there going like, well, when surely the tornado was more set up and I wasn't paying attention. Not really. I think all they did was make. A, a scene or two up to it, they put dark clouds in the background. Beyond that, there's no fucking foreshadowing. There's just a tornado. Why? Why? <laughs> and the outcome of the tornado doesn't matter much either. The kids are fine, I guess. I don't I don't even honestly come to think of it know why the tornado happened. I don't really get it. I don't really get it. Maybe just to, to show so Marge could get out in the chaos of both a riot and a tornado. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure why. The kids get scattered around. There's a joke that suggests Ralph has died. <laughs> uh, but it's it's fine. It's like, it's it's a macabre joke, but I, I think it works fine. But I don't know. I don't really get why it happens now that I think about it. I don't know why the tornado happens, really. Eh. <laughs> I don't know what we're being shown. 
I don't know. I don't know what it means for the plot about kid supervision. I don't get it. What's the point? It, it's only just occurred to me. I don't understand the point. So whatever. I mean, I I I will say this: the ending does, in spite of these problems, the ending does manage to be sweet. The fact that they all missed her uh, and everybody hugs her. It's kind of a sweet little moment. It manages it somehow. It pulls it off. But I don't know. Like, like they did most of the work to get there. They did more foreshadowing, more planting and paying off of things than you expect from The Simpsons these days. But there was a much better episode about Marge going to prison. The ending is very rushed. And in the end, it was just, you know, it's more average than anything else. It also doesn't feel like much of a season finale. I mean, this very much feels like a season finale where it's just like, well, we'll see you next year. You know, occasionally they've done season finales where they go, this might be the end of the show. Why not act like it could be? The, pff, not really here they don't give a shit so i don't know just kind of average it's probably one of the best episodes of the season but who cares you know i, I mean eh, eh. I, I, in the end kind of the stuff i'm saying it's good for is 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 saying like because modern simpsons normally sucks here's some of the things they did right and that's a very fucking low bar you know that's a very low bar so whatever i give this one a fine out of Hell with this! Cool news! Some hot news for you. As this is the season finale, I feel like this would be the time you do like a top whatever worst and best episodes of the season. I'll do one really fast, but like I don't have a specific number here or anything. Like the thing I have to explain, and I've said more or less the same thing before. I I just said something on Twitter that I guess I'm very I'm I'm so proud of myself. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just repeat it for you basically. The thing about this stuff the thing about New Simpsons is I'm never really defending it. I'm never really trying to find glimmers of it becoming good again. If it happened magically, I would admit it. But mostly I'm just finding echoes of it being what it once was. These are more like death rattles, you know, than they are like signs of a comeback. That's not what I said on Twitter. What I said on Twitter, though, was like I don't have time for people defending Modern Simpsons going, oh, it's not, it wasn't that bad. Maybe it's getting better. I don't got time for that. Trying to find these signs of life. I view all criticism I do of this show as an extended autopsy report. That is really how I feel. It's just like it's been dead for so long, and I am just, I guess I'm reporting on the like, <laughs> the little blip before it flatlines. <laughs> you know, I don't, maybe I, we're both seeing these as signs of life, but I'm seeing these as, I, I, I believe the plug should have been pulled. I don't see any point in resuscitation ever happening. This metaphor is fun, huh? I, I just, you know, to me it is dead. Um, and I'm just kind of poking it with a stick. <laughs> so so you, you got to understand, if, if, if I w was able to eat my words, if something great happened, absolutely. I just don't, I just don't see it happening. I mean, the closest we came was like something like Halloween of Horror, but even then, you know, it doesn't feel right. The show doesn't feel correct for a lot of reasons. Animation, writing, uh, characterization, et cetera, et cetera. I was just looking at, oh, geez, some of the, I just saw a gif from the, like when Homer, the chili cook off, when Homer's like hallucinating and his, uh, his body's all kind of like coming apart and all like wavy and weird. That is some incredible animation. I mean, Jesus. That is, we just don't have, I mean, there's just nothing like that now. They just do not do anything remotely like that. It's incredible. Uh, really, like, stunningly high-quality animation. I was, I forgot how cool that looked. But anyway, let's go from, uh, and these are just random numbers. This is not like a top ten. This is a, I have four best, and I have seven or eight <laughs> worst, something like that. So we're just going to go from best episode of the season all the way down to worst. But me saying that, the reason I think this is kind of futile is because I don't, you know, really care. I don't really, these aren't, it's not like go out and watch these best ones. It's just like these are the, the bests are the ones that have some glimmers of what the show once was. The worst are these disgusting examples of just like how horribly we are treating this show's legacy by letting this piece of shit keeping on forever these aren't like standouts these are i mean they are but you know standouts in a sea of fucking diarrhea so whatever i'm just saying don't don't if you didn't watch these don't go out and watch them or something don't don't get them who cares you know who cares here's the top 10 or top whatever top random number list and who cares so here are the best going from best down to least best and please note best means eh. 
So the best is probably Halloween of Horror. Uh, I think most people agree with that. It was a fresh idea for The Simpsons to do a non-Treehouse of Horror Halloween episode. It had some very good emotional moments. It still was not quite right. Uh, It felt a little too dark at times, but, you know, pretty good. And then I would say the Burns Cage. I personally said I might, might put the Burns Cage about on equal footing with Halloween of Horror. I don't know which one I like better. I know a lot of people think the Burns Cage was also just shitty. It really, I mean, it was. It was kind of a bullet point style plot. And and it was annoying that Smithers, I don't know, nothing happened. Like, really, nothing momentous happened. And it was one of those ones where they built it up like something momentous was going to happen. Smithers was going to, like, say he was gay or whatever. Nothing happened. But uh, I think the emotional stuff more or less landed. It was basically a sweet episode, even though it was kind of bullshit and personally i kind of like grounded stuff more than kind of hyper weird stuff and halloween horror is a bit over the top there are actually people trying to murder homer and lisa which is a little bit out there for me i don't actually know which one i like better i'll probably never watch these again ever (laughs) so i will never i will never decide that will be an eternal conundrum uh barthood a lot of people don't like barthood okay Fine. I think Barthood worked pretty well. I think Barthood worked kind of, again, emotionally. The plot was followable, stayed pretty much on point. Somehow the way they sort of jacked the uh, style of a real movie m- made it easier for them to apparently like structure something without going off the rails. It's dumb in that it rewrote the Simpsons history. It turned them into different characters effectively. It made Lisa the sort of like dominant kid of the family and Bart was the 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 forgotten one and it, you know it just changed the family dynamic so if you're supposed to take it as canon it was weird but as a self-contained thing it basically worked it was sweet enough and it yeah it worked fine and then fine whatever the last best one is the one i just talked about orange is the new yellow because it it wasn't that offensive but you know it's not fucking good uh <laughs> it was just fine it's nah, fine Whatever. Here are the worst episodes, going from least worst to most worst. Least worst. Teenage Mutant Milk Caused Hurdles. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Milk Caused Hurdles. Yeah, bad episode. Uh, I, I I do remember saying that episode has grounded comedy in it. Actually, it's stuff that made me feel like there was more of an attempt to be old Simpsons there. But at the end of it all, you still fucking had mutant milk that made uh, uh, Bart grow a mustache. And Lisa, what happened to Lisa? I don't even fucking remember. She had pimples? Yeah, she had pimples. Whatever. I don't know. You know, at the end of it all, you had a fucking mutant milk de- plot device, which is no thank you. Uh, <laughs> below then, after that, worse, Puffless. Puffless would have basically been fine if it was just an episode about uh, Patty and Selma quitting smoking, but... The plot got eclipsed by Maggie's extraordinary animal adventure where Maggie runs around with animals and talks to them and has an imaginary fun Disney movie time, and I don't like it. So basically, I hate that one for magic or extraordinary animal adventure. Simprovised, simprovised the episode with the improvisational bit at the end that just uh, last previous week's episode. Yeah, simprovised. I, the episode itself was... Not good. Again, bullet point plot. The main reason I'm putting on here are the the live minutes. The live minutes are bad. The 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 three six minutes in total of live Homer trying to improv. Not not good. Kind of a, a, a one of the many low points in the show's history. I would say look like shit. Uh, as a friend put it, I said before, but he's put it. It's both anti writing and anti animation. It's sort of the opposites of what the show's found. You know, the show's foundation was incredible writing, awesome animation. It's the opposite of both those things. It's a it's a ac- actor trying to improv, not doing an amazing job, and b- b- horrible, horrible, stilted computer animation. I would tie Fland Canyon and To Courier With Love because both of them basically did not have plots. I think I said I hated Fland Canyon more because there was even less of a plot, but I really don't even know. They They both just don't nothing really happens to courier with love has a little more of a plot but not really it's a joke plot that doesn't i don't know none of it makes sense none of it goes anywhere it's just about the simpsons faffing about not anything happens there's really no real conflict in either of those episodes might as well put them on equal footing because again i'm not re-watching these again so uh the girl code the girl code it's very simple lisa creates sentient ai 
No. No. No, no. <laughs> Lisa the Veterinarian. Lisa the Veterinarian was... Unsurprisingly, the ones at the bottom are the ones I did Simpsons of, because when they're really, really bad, I make a Simpsons. And Lisa the Veterinarian had the B-plot about Marge cleaning up crime scenes. Fucked up. No good. Don't like it. Not a good episode. Destroys the character some. Turns Marge into somebody with PTSD or something. <laughs> also, the opening, which features what again? Uh, guys jumping through a glass window, naked, shoving their dicks in the snow, followed by Lisa giving mouth to mouth to a raccoon as a naked Homer watches with people crowding around everywhere, taking photos of Lisa doing this with their cell phones. Yeah, no. And then, of course, Every Man's Dream. I guess I put Every Man's Dream as the absolute worst. You know, I don't know which one actually offended me more, this one or Lisa the Veterinarian. But Every Man's Dream, it had that thing of both being an episode where they acted like something big was going to happen, which I am analyzing these to an extent with a cultural context. And this was one of the ones they built up like crazy. Homer and Marge are going to split up. They're going to split up. Homer and Marge, watch out. Fuck you. Of course, nothing really happened. And furthermore, it was such a just fuck you episode where they just went, this episode didn't even happen. It didn't happen. It was a million dream sequences inside Marge's head, inside a back tattoo on Lena Dunham's character from Girls. Very, very, very bad. Basically not an episode. Basically nothing happened in it. And there's the Simpsons of that one. It is my most uh, phoned in one because it was a very phoned in episode. Thank you. That's it. The best and the worst of the best of the worst, worst and the worst. Terrible. Not a good season. Uh, Simpsons is getting better. I don't fucking think so. No, it isn't. Shut up. Never. It's bad. Overall, a really unremarkable bunch of shit. That was 12 episodes total, just over half of the full season of 22. So everything else just kind of fell into a, 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 a heap of unremarkable badness. And that's how it is. <laughs> Season 27 will go down as another season that did not matter. That had six minutes of bad live television that was fucking weird and not necessary. Great. So that's the end of the season. Thank fuck. Let me say quickly, there's a thing. I will put a link to it in the description. It's not, uh, it's just, it's just cool for me. And, uh, but uh, this guy, Jordan Minor, wrote a thing about... Um, how the weird, and this is basically what I've been saying, the, the weird sort of postmodern ugly shit on the internet uh, making fun of The Simpsons is better than the show itself these days. And he basically wrote an article of like, about that, and he put, uh, he put The Simpsons pretty far up on, the, on, on, on a list there. Uh, so I'll just put a link to it. It's on geek.com. He seems like a good guy, this Jordan Miner. He's written about other uh, cool stuff, uh, uh, about, like, uh, Justin Roiland stuff before Rick and Morty and so forth. So he, he seems to have his finger on the pulse of weird, good shit. Uh, he actually contacted me a really long time ago, like years ago, um, when I think people were first kind of finding The Simpsons, to ask me if I want to do an interview. But, you know, he was really just a, a freelance. I think he's an editor now. At, uh, he's a senior editor at, at Geek.com. But he was really just a freelance guy. And he was just going to pitch people. And I assume he did pitch people the idea of interviewing me about The Simpsons. <laughs> but, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I think just nobody cared enough because he just kind of that just died out. But anyway, it was nice of him to write something about it. And what was also cool was he tweeted it at me along with uh, uh, someone more famous on the internet's uh, handle for something they did with The Simpsons. And so the more famous person retweeted it, so now people are actually maybe seeing my shit. So that was that was nice. But I'll link you to it, whatever. It's in the description. It's just like a paragraph about me in there, and there's other Simpsons stuff in there, uh, like Simpsons shit posting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, but anyway, that was the finale. The season's over. Uh, I won't disappear for the whole summer. I will try to come back in a semi-timely fashion, hopefully, to do that South Park Simpsons comparison I said I was going to do about how South Park's longevity uh, is doable, whereas The Simpsons is just fucking dead and, 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 you know, zombie style. I don't like saying zombie Simpsons. I think it's corny, but, you know, I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll try to come back and do that. I, I, I don't know when. If you remember, uh, quite a few episodes back here of, on this podcast, I kept mentioning working on another video, and then I just stopped talking about it because I just realized I never had the time to finish it. So that I still want to do. 
I will probably do the South Park comparison thing before the video, but, you know, I'll see what strikes my fancy. Both of those things are definitely, definitely coming this summer because I have three months. Hopefully more will come beyond that, but I will at least promise those two things. I won't say when because I don't know and I won't give a definite order, but uh, they'll show up. Yeah, if you don't follow me on YouTube and you think you want to see other shit that isn't The Simpsons, do that. Go follow me on YouTube, please. You could also, I don't know, I, I don't, I don't give pretty, I don't give too many updates on what I'm doing, but you're, you're always welcome to follow me on Twitter too, um, which is at Joe Devational, J-O-E-T-I-V-A-T-I-O-N-A-L, and maybe occasionally I'll mention what I'm doing, but mostly I'm just making really dark jokes about like dying, so I get why people don't like to uh, follow me. <laughs> Okay, I don't know. When I come back, I will do the South Park Simpsons thing. And then I'm going to talk about the future of this shit in greater detail. Because I have some stuff I'd, I'd, I'd like to talk about. Uh, you know, the, I, I mentioned Rick and Morty Season 2 uh, last episode. And that seemed to be the main thing people wanted to talk about. So, I mean, that might be something I can record about sometime. Um, I have a couple ideas. And I have other things I want to get done. So, uh, I, I will talk to you in greater detail about that next time but i think we're done are we done i think we're done we're done with the season i'm very happy i don't think i have anything else to say right now thanks for sticking with all this shit i sort of technically did the whole season i mean i didn't get the beginning i sort of did it i did a recap so close enough right <laughs> okay i love you i guess yeah yeah i guess so yeah all right, bye. I never came up with a sign-off. Maybe I should have. Now to hell with it. Hell with it!